because I am so excited about this project. So Jan, I'm gonna turn it over to you. Thank you so much, Marie. Brandy, are you with us? Maybe having a little bit of audio. So I'm gonna go ahead and just get started. So welcome everyone who is joining us for our event today. You are here part of a three part series and we have our keynote speaker, Marie Hale. Um, we're gonna share more about her as well today. So before we get started, we wanted to share with everyone just a little bit about our DEI partner program, the initiative that we have running um, for 2023 as we kind of continue in our efforts uh, into this new year. Our vision is to create a DEI partner community and we want to leverage any type of Comcast brand and any investments as we recruit new members um, to our indirect partner community. This program offers various professional and sponsorships to educational resources. And we encourage you to reach out to your dedicated ambassadors to learn more about our program. Now, a little bit about Marie. She is a co-founder and CEO of At Revenue, and it's one of the foremost, she is one of the foremost leaders in the sales re revolution. And for about 20 years, she's led and trained various sales teams to take the ick out of sales, increase their revenue and create evangelists for out of our clients. Marie uses her unique blend of humor, professional love and ways of implementing tools to not only educate, but inspire and elevate every guest at one of her events. Marie proudly accepted the Women Tech Founders Leadership in Marketing Award and was rated among the top 50 trainers and consultants in the country for three consecutive years. For those who are attending, we encourage you to participate and pay close attention. We have an exciting giveaway with Marie that she's actually offered to give to all of our people in attendance today. So in order to qualify, you will need to attend all three sessions that we have planned for you. And at the end of the third session, there will be a random drawing where you can win a one-on-one -on -one exclusive session with Marie. And now without further ado, please welcome our amazing speaker, Marie Hill. I am so incredibly grateful. And like most of us that have worked in a pandemic, I have just had the dogs that I locked out shove their way into my office. Luckily, she's only five pounds. He probably won't disrupt me too much, but I'm going to close the door so that I can have... Um, excuse, could you close my door, please? I also have a very understanding and loving partner. Thank God. So... <clears throat> Again, I'm going to ask for those of you that are in attendance, faces are everything. I want to be able to see your reactions, to, to, to be able to hear your voices as we go through this. There be polls that we're putting up. So even if you ain't feeling cute, even if you ain't feeling special today, just a good video on will take me a long way as we go through the psychology of sales. I have been a marketer for many years and a sales expert for a good handful of years. And as a small business owner working with SMBs, the lessons I have learned, especially as we've gone through the pandemic, have been hard earned, but they've instilled in me the tools that I know small businesses are going to need to use to not only get through where they are today, but where they've got to go as this world progresses. I remember, and, and please give me a raise of hands or an emoji or a something. How many of you are tired of hearing the word pivot? Right? We pivoted and we pivoted and we pivoted. 
And within at revenue, we started talking about pirouetting because we knew that this world was going to change quickly and it was not going to stop changing. There are so many things that are coming through the post pandemic world that most of us, including some of the top scientists and psychologists in the world, were simply not prepared for. And we would be remiss to think that it's not going to impact our sales pipeline. Today, we're going to go through a quick crash course on what has changed in the psychology of our buyers and how we can create a system that not only builds your brand, but allows you to close more with less resources and elevate above your competition. So if you guys are in, I'm in, and I'm gonna say one more time, I love you and I wanna see you and I wanna hear the feedback. So please use the chat. We are gonna be doing polls as we go through, but your questions are critical to this process. We will make time at the end to answer some bulk questions, but there are, if there's something hot and heavy that you want me to take down in the moment, you can absolutely, absolutely let us know that through chat. So let's dive into today's, curric into today's curriculum. This is me. If you would like to tag me and share something super smart or funny that I said, we highly encourage that. So here's the handles. But I want you to know why I'm in this. Or at revenue, sales is an expression of love. We call it professional love. It means that you show up being willing to ask the tough questions and say the hard thing and really understand your clients. And that's going to take you from transactional to relationship in a mere moment. So we are going to infuse professional love into everything you do. And it's going to revolutionize the way you sell. Today, we're going to go through the basics of what has shifted and how people process sales in the first place and how to elevate your practice, your channel partnership, your business into a space where you can not only sell more for Comcast, which we deeply appreciate, but sell more of your services, create, create deeper relationships and excel beyond the market and the changes ahead of you. So we got a level set. We've got to talk about the shift. And yes, there is a T at the end of that word and an F in the middle because it has been a wild ride. The way that people process has changed. How could it not? We all spent months, if not years, in a, in a mentality of scarcity, in a survival mode. And when you think about whatever your, uh, your psychological back of the reader's digest version of understanding psychology is, you know that when people are in survival mode, what happens? Everything pulls into just keeping them alive, just keeping things going for another day, another moment, another minute. And it's exhausting. When you pull all of that in to just existing, what happens is we exhaust all of our other resources, right? All of this energy is put into just survival, as it should be. We were terrified. We didn't know what was happening. We didn't know what loved ones we were going to lose. It was a 
universal shift in everyone's processing. And our brains are equipped to take care of us and make sure that survival is first and foremost. And then we take care of our community. And then we focus on abundance and elevation. But when we can't focus on those two other things, our body starts to drain from other systems. And this is called limbic fatigue. Your brain is working so hard just to keep the things going that it has to keep going that this list of effects is what's happening with everyone in your pipeline. And again, raise of hands, give me a, I see you girl. How many of you have been in the middle of a conversation and lost the entire English language? Like, it's just like gone. You had a thought and it was going to come out and then boom. limbic fatigue. People experience this in majorative is confusion and just like, I, I, I tell people all the time, like, I have no more file space left, right? Like I need to defrag, I need, to, I, I take notes. And sometimes I just can't access that file. It's not there. Every one of your prospects, every one of your customers that you value is going through this. And it feels like mental soup. You can't really pull the parts away to see what you're dealing with. So when you're in sales conversations, if you've got somebody that is in this space, how effective are they at making decisions? How similar are the conversations you had in like 2019 to 2022, 23? They're different. We all have so many more stresses that are bringing us down and depleting our ability to access executive function, which is what allows your brain to actually get the words out your mouth. That is a difficult cycle just from a, from a neurological point of view, but the impact that it's having is we are seeing a triple lag in our sales cycles. And we're seeing people that simply can't make decisions. The other part of that though, is that you will see people that make decisions incredibly quickly and never listen to expectations, right? They're like, you're going to save me. I'm going to throw you a few bucks and you're going to make my entire life beautiful. It's No. We all know those are the clients we shouldn't take. But it's such a stranglehold on the market that sometimes we take them and they end up costing us more. And so I want to move you into what's got to change in the process. Let's talk about features and benefits. We all know that Comcast provides you with an incredible suite of tools that are going to empower and level up every person that you do business with. But I'm going to tell you, you can't sell on features and benefits anymore. You can't. If you go out and reach all of the benefits and make people feel warm and cozy and somehow convince an entire country to wear their robes backwards just because it feels good. This is not a sustainable client base. This is a snuggly world that people are going to catch on to. 
you need to be able to sell to what's truly important to them because they're all buying for their reasons and not yours. And if you don't know what their reasons are, you've got transactions and not relationships. And the one thing that I've seen as a sales coach for many years, and as somebody who that analyzes the market over and over again, is that when you're selling from a transactional space without creating relationships, you're in a bidding war. Look at what's happened to manufacturing. Anybody that can cut 10 cents off of a product is going to win. That's not who you need as a client base. And I'm going to teach you over the course of these three sessions how to create evangelists that not only understand the value of what you bring, but are willing to share it with others. And that's where we hit sales magic. There are a few things that are working in your favor. If you are not being transactional, you're going to have to ask questions. You're going to have to dig. You're going to have to find out their why. But here's the thing. People are programmed to answer questions. All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw a little something out there. Again, audience participation, wildly valued. How many of you remember what it's like to hear your mom say, I asked you. Are you going to answer her on some level? You want to eat that night you are. Think of Billy, Billy on the street. Does anybody remember Billy on the street? He was a comedian that would run up to people and scream questions at them. But you know what they would do? They would answer. Because they were programmed to answer whether it was what you had for breakfast today or do you like K-pop? You're going to say something. So as you're building relationships with your clientele, with your new prospects, most of the time, they're going to answer a question because it feels weird for them not to. So if you can be wildly curious, if you can be thoughtful and document and, and really take note of the questions that you're asking that get the kind of answers that you want and use softening statements in that process, you're going to get great answers. So if I were to ask Brandy, Brandy, You've been paying this other company for years, and I know you've got a great relationship with them, but softening statement. I don't want to put you in an uncomfortable space, but I want to ask the question, what would really change if you changed providers? Is it the loss of a relationship? Or is it sinking 5, 10, 17% to your bottom line so that you can keep a few more employees? How many of you would feel comfortable asking that question without softening it a little bit first? I'm going to give you some of those tools. So hang with me. Let's talk about the psychology. We know that people have different learning styles, right? Some of us are visual, some of us are audio, some of us need to get in there and get dirty. But this thing that happens uh, when they invented the internet, which let's face it, Comcast, big fan of, but there became a new learning style. It's a digital learning style. And that is the Googler. We all know know that you can Google yourself in just about any decision you want to make. You've got a sniffle, probably cancer. You need a new vendor, 
Here's 75 and why they all suck. When you have a digital communicator, they're going to give you cues when you're speaking to them that will help you understand. And so let me, let me break it down a little bit. We're all going to go into a sales call and have a little bit of conversation first, right? Like, I can't tell you how many 20-year-olds have asked me, oh my gosh, is that like a fish on your wall? No, it's not a fish on my wall. I don't fish. Nobody fishes. I, I live in Chicago. I don't want to eat the fish around here. I'm probably going to die. But they're trying to get some kind of relationship going. During that relationship phase, people are going to give you cues. They're going to say, I hear what you're saying. You know, I absolutely see this, that, and the other. I feel like when you're dealing with a digital communicator, they're going to talk about what they've read, what they know, what they understand, what they'd like to look into. And here's the key about a digital communicator. They need to walk all the way down the path of education, and then they're going to come back and diverge and be able to ask questions. So during that little bit of time that you have to build a relationship, you want to listen for those cues that are going to tell you how this person wants to be communicated with. And I want to share with you the platinum rule. We all know the golden rule, right? Treat others as they want to be treated or as you want to be treated. The platinum rule is that you treat others how they want to be treated. You speak their language. You present in a manner that is most appropriate for that person. And when we get to the end of this, I'm going to give you the key that unlocks it all. One of those keys is our ability to influence. This is a tough one. Because yes, we can have a million conversations. We can send 30,000 cold emails. But what actually gets through? These are the percentages, folks. 7% of your words get through. Seven. S seven. If you want to take it up a notch, it's tonality. And tonality is the speed of your, your voice how quickly you talk, whether or not you're taking pauses and letting things sink in. And the rest of it is body language. For those of you that are still running that shoe leather express out there on the street, shaking hands and getting into meetings with actual faces, body language feels a little easier. For those of us that are voguing it out we've got a smaller space within which to use our body language but I want you to think of it this way think of how we evolved first we started to point and then we started to point and grunt uh -huh. yeah and then we put words with it we are still a progression. So if you want to be able to influence your audience, whether it be an individual, an organization, or the entire internet, you need to be able to influence to the maximum of your capacity. So when we bring those things into a new space and really embrace the idea that a cold email is not going to work, if you send a proposal without your voice on top of it, or even a video that gives a little body language as to how they walk through, you are leaving almost 93% of your ability to get through their filters and influence them on the table.
how many of you are willing to give up 93% of your sales cap capacity? Yeah, no, next slide. Let's talk about how people make decisions. Emotion versus logic, motivational factors, and the human decision model. How do people make decisions? People make decisions backed up based on emotion. And they back it up with logic. And this is 100% of the time. One of my favorite stories is working with a engineering company. And they were in 30 countries, 300 employees. Their major client had 57% of their book of business. And they were terrified. And when I made this presentation to them, one of the engineers said, you know, Marie, you're right. And by the way, I'm not going to fake an Indian accent because as pale as I am, nobody needs that. But he said, Marie, you know, you're right. We do make decisions based on emotion, but we're engineers. We just create the logic. People make decisions based on emotion 100% of the time. This is why you can Google yourself into any decision that you have already made. If our ability to influence through our body language and our tonality is not hitting their emotions, we are missing a critical part of our ability to bring in that sale. And if all of your sales efforts are based on the logic of savings or ease of use, or simply you're not happy, try something else, you are missing out not only on building wildly fruitful relationships, I will guarantee you, you are cutting your sales success by 70 to the latest statistic was about 83%. Don't be afraid to speak to their emotion. They're frustrated. They're exhausted. They don't have time for this. It is not something they want to spend a massive amount of energy fixing, but they need it because if they don't increase the profitability, they're going to have to fire two people in the next year. That's an easy sell. Saving 10%, not as significant. The next place they go is to the human decision model. And folks, we go through this over and over and over again on a consistent basis. And I'm gonna give you my favorite scenario because I like cereal. I don't know if anybody else likes cereal. I like cereal. So I've got Raisin Bran and I've got Captain Crunch Oops All Berries. It's breakfast time. I want a mosh. If I eat the Raisin Bran, I can be a responsible adult and possibly have less gastrointestinal just dresses later. But if I eat the Oops All Berries, it's freaking delicious. It's going to tear the roof of my mouth apart and it's totally gonna to be worth it. I'm gonna go oops all berries. Cognition, there is a decision to be made. Divergence, what are my options? Convergence, what is my decision? When you take divergence out, this is where you become the slimy salesperson. You ever been to an auto dealership where they're like, Hey, welcome in. Yes, your credit. This is your car. No, this is your car. No, this is the one. You get this. No, it's one. How good does that feel to you? You have no decision to make. So what are you going to do? You're either going to go find someplace else to make a decision or compare. Or you're going to walk out because you're now being convinced 
or pushed into a sale. That is your, your prospect's biggest fear, being convinced, manipulated, or pushed into a situation that they don't agree to. And that's not why you're here. You are a Comcast partner. You have something in your arsenal that allows you to care for your clients in a truly exquisite way and provide them with the best possible packaging. You need to be able to provide points of divergence for that. Is this a plan for you? Is this a plan for you? According to what you told me, I believe that this is the best recommendation, but we've got other options. Let's make this decision together. I'm gonna send you the slide deck. There's a, a citation in here where you can learn more about the human decision model, but this is the ick factor. You ick when you skip divergence. It doesn't have to be Comcast or another provider. It doesn't have to be you or someone else. You can create moments of divergence that are perfect for your key demographic but that is your responsibility, unless you want them to go shop elsewhere. So let's put it in a process. I'm gonna ask for another raise of hands, another set of emoticons, whatever you feel like doing, interpretive dance, I will take it. How many of you have an actual documented sales process? Oh, Brandy, I see a high and high five to you. Love it. Your sales process is the first ambassador of your brand. It's going to tell people everything they need to know about working with you. And I am going to encourage you to adopt a soft and nurturing permission-based sales process that puts the prospect in the seat of decision while you support them in seeing the value in the relationship and the product. It's got very specific steps. And guys, I promised you in the copy of the invitation and right now that you are gonna be able to walk out of today's meeting and implement this series of steps to immediately increase your revenue. These are the steps of a successful sales process. What I want you to notice is how far down presentation is. We are not in features and benefits lands anymore. It doesn't matter what you present if you don't know what's important to them if you don't know that they're committed to making a change and you understand the financial impact and what it's gonna take for them to make a decision. So let's go through it. The very first step is an agenda. And ooh, agendas are magic because they are laced with permission. I'm gonna to talk to you from a very psychological level now. If any of you are familiar with neuro-linguistic programming, which is the base level of hypnotherapy, you know that you need permission from to get them to engage and commit. And the more often you get them to say yes during your sales conversation, the more likely they are to say yes at the end. So here's what an agenda looks like. First, we start by asking for permission to set an agenda. Kate, I know we've got a lot to talk about today. Is it okay with you if I set just a little agenda so that we know where we're going? I know that we've got about 90 minutes set for today. Does that still work for you? Is that, is that an okay time for you? Is anything coming up? Perfect, thank you. The purpose of the conversation today is to find out if the solutions I have are gonna be a good fit for you. 
Is that your understanding? Are, are we on the same page? Great. So my expectations today are honestly to ask a ton of questions. And I want to make sure that it's okay for us to talk about the tough questions. I want to talk about budget. I want to talk about what's been working, what's not been working. Is it okay with you if I, if I dig a little deeper than you may experience with other vendors of my kind? This is critical. This will allow you to ask the questions that nobody else asks and diffuse any bombs that could be waiting for you and truly understand what's important to them because it's not always what you think. And then you ask them what their expectations are for the meeting. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now, this can get a little dangerous, right? Because this is the place where they may tell you everything that that other did wrong and all of the bit and a bit and a bit and a bit and they fall off the cliff. Your job as a sales professional is to bring them back in and say, you know what? We're going to go through all of that, but I want to make sure that we know where we're going at the end of the conversation. All right. And I'm going to level y'all. This is my favorite part. So, so lean in just a little bit. The outcome. Thank you, Kate. At the end of this conversation, I kind of, I, I see it going one of two ways. Either one, it feels like a really good fit for both of us and it makes sense to schedule the next steps. But I also want you to know that if at any point it doesn't feel like a good fit on either side of the table, it's completely okay to say so. I promise you won't hurt my feelings. We will still be business friends but I wanna make sure it's a good fit on both sides. Is that okay with you? So what just happened there? We did a takeaway sale. If it's not a good fit on either side, also known as if you are a screaming and I don't wanna do business with you, I'm going to say no. What that does for the prospect is it puts them on their best behavior because universally, the biggest fear is not to be liked. Nobody wants to be told no. So whether you are a new salesperson or the owner of a huge organization, now you're on the same playing field. Mazel tov. The other thing that it does is it gives them permission to say no. You will see that prospect literally put their shoulders back and get more relaxed because they know that no is an okay answer. This will be one of the most empowering parts of your sales process. You don't want a pipeline full of hope. Hope does not close deals. It does not feed your family. And it certainly doesn't make Comcast rain down glitter on you. Although they may send you glitter in all of their other ways. But your job here is to truly make the best decision for you and the prospect. And we call that professional love. But here's the danger. Sometimes when you're having a conversation with someone, you're gonna get happy ears. They're gonna say something to you and you're gonna be like, oh my gosh, I can solve that right now. And here's the 15 ways that we can solve it. And it's gonna be great. And isn't this wonderful? And isn't it what you wanna do? No, it's not. That's your perception as to what they want. Your job is to dig deeper and understand what's important to them. It may be cost savings. It may be increased seats. It may be having a partner 
that is going to be there for them, that they're not going to have to chase down 17 different help desks when they are trying to run their business and make it home in time to feed their kids. But you have to ask the questions to find out what is truly important. Sales is the first ambassador of your brand. If you want people to know what it's going to be like to work with you, and you've got a sloppy sales process, you're done. If you want clients that are going to feel like they run the show, let them own your sales process. And then you don't get to get it back because you've told them that they're in control. You want to be in control. You deserve to own this process in a way that feels congruous with every next step that they are gonna experience. So let's dive a little deeper. Oh, and let's have my mouse work because that would be fun too. What have I done? Hmm. Look, nothing's working. At this time, we would like to open it up to questions. And I'm going to work on getting the slides to progress. And solamente, please forgive me. With that being said, I would invite you at this time to unmute and ask a couple of good questions. Or tell me how much stinking fun we're having. I'll take anything at this point. I'm desperate and really just trying to shuffle I, first i'm going to test volume because i was struggling initially so i'll make sure you can hear me can you hear me okay i got you all right well i just want to say um the process details i am all about process and this is fantastic so my process has never been um this elaborate so i'm learning quite a bit um, and I will apply these skills even uh, not only in the workplace, but at home because we sell everywhere we go, uh, right? Um, I'm, I'm just learning immensely and I can't wait to learn more. Um, and I'm, I'm hoping because I can't wait to hear more from you that that mouse comes. <laughs> I, I can't, I'm, I'm just on pins and needles waiting for the next steps. And so if the mouse doesn't come back, to, to life today that's okay because there's always um, there's, there's the next, the next iteration yeah yeah hey i'm ready i'm ready to talk about call to action for the next session don't worry yes yes and we are at the 48 minute level i know we're a couple minutes over so what okay. i'm gonna do, i am going to ask that you one put any questions that you have into the chat we'll be there to answer them and I will follow up with you 100%. We have our next event coming up in, I believe, two weeks. You need to be there because now you have an agenda that you can work through. And when we go into the next phase, I'm going to teach you how to ask questions that uncover not just the apparent reasons for doing business with you but the compelling reasons that will turn your clients into evangelists. So if those of you that are still with us would like to stick around for questions, I invite you to, but I'd like to turn it over to Steven so that he can give you a little insight on some fun stuff we've planned. Marie, thank you so much. This was so insightful to hear uh, your process and talking about the psychology behind sales and how it's changed. L let me just say a couple of things that really stood out to me, and I hope these resonated with our partners today. You talked about the human decision model. 
cognition, divergence, and convergence. And that ick factor is the divergence. And if we happen to skip that process, we're making sales really icky. And the second thing that I heard you say that really stuck out to me was that an agenda equals permission mm -hmm. and gives you a huge opportunity. Let this be an excuse for you to ask permission. And the more you can get your customers to talk, the more that they will naturally open up and tell you about their situation, about their business pain points, their problems, and it will help you solve a problem for your customer. And the last thing that really stuck out to me was professional love. I love that tag, professional yeah. love. Fantastic. Partners, I hope you enjoyed today's session with Marie. She shared some gems and some nuggets around shifting the way that we do sales today in this post-pandemic era. Well, today is just the first part of a three-part powerhouse series. Session number two is going to be on Wednesday, March the 29th at the same time, 4 p.m. Eastern. And our third session will be on Thursday, April the 13th, again at that same time, 4 p.m. on the same Zoom channel. If you just take a look in that chat section, Jan's going to pop in the registration links for those next two sessions. Listen, don't wait to get off of this call to register. Register for it now. And here, let me tell you why. If you attend, all three sessions, if you attend all three sessions, you have a chance to win a lightning in a bottle session with Marie herself. And she will have a deep dive conversation with you, take a look at your business, help you increase your sales proficiency, help you decrease the downtime, remove the clutter in sales process, and give you a nice, smooth, well-oiled machine so that your output can become greater than it is today. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to your Comcast Business and Macergy Ambassador. We want to thank you so much for joining us today. If you want to hang out for a few minutes and ask some questions, we'd love to hear from you. If not, feel free to drop, and we'll be in touch with a follow-up email shortly. And with that, I'll turn it back to Marie, just in case we have any questions that come in. Marie? My name is Marie, and I'm here for questions. Thank you so much for those of you that hung in there with us, for those that dropped in late and showed up like champs anyway. We're going to make sure you get the recording. But I would love to hear back from the peanut gallery. How many of you ask permission? in your sales process. Brandy, what does that feel like for you? Um, I think empowering. Uh, and I, I think that's the best word, maybe empowering. And it's, it's a freedom moment for me. I, I know the next step. I always know what's happening next when I ask for permission. Um, so I, I think. Have you ever to ask a question that they might not hear from another vendor from another company? Do you find they open up um, a bit? But definitely, they definitely open up a bit more. And I am one. That, uh, I, I'm an open book. I love to converse. I may, I'm not Marie. Don't get me wrong. So I need some Marie time, obviously, because you've got some great nuggets that Steve shared. Um, but being open to conversation, being open to learning about individuals uh, is necessary. And starting with those questions, gaining permission, I, I learned that from my greatest mentor, who is 15 just turned 15 my daughter asks me for permission and I learned that from her and, and you win. she's the greatest person I know she's the greatest person I know and and, and kids are curious they want to know curiosity you said all the things that I learned from those that innovate so well and so youth has taught me um, to explore great options uh, that I seek information from those that are not like me. And I, I learn from this great group 
um, of sales professionals who I'm not in that space. And so um, I seek information outside um, this brain. Um, and I think that's where I gain the best knowledge is diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, I, I can't use Brandy's brain. I need others that don't think like me. Um, that's maybe my greatest nugget. And, okay. and that's where I learn the best. I think through that filter of DEI, if we don't have permission to ask questions, we don't get to ask questions. People's journeys are their own. And if you ask, and I don't know how many of you have had this experience, but if you've ever had somebody cold dial you, and I'm a sales coach, I want to hear what everybody's saying, right? I am that sucker that will take every call just so that I can be like, okay, what you got going on, boo? But when they ask me stuff that they don't have permission to ask me, I'm done. You don't have permission to ask me about my income level. You never asked. If you had asked, it's a completely different story. And the best part of that is when you ask and they say yes, now they have ownership of it. And the more you can get the words to come out of their mouth, and give, the, give it back to them. They have complete ownership in what they've said. And it's not you convincing them of anything. It's you participating in helping them choose the best option for their business. And I think from what I know of this incredible Comcast business and Macergy DE and I group, this is a place where we truly seek to understand before we seek to be understood or place a product or anything else. We wanna know where that person is and what their journey is so that we can bring it into the collective culture of where this group is going and how we're gonna change the world. And like, I feel so lucky to have met Jan and Kate and Steven and, and Jess Breyer and see their visions because this is how we change the world together. It's a drop at a time. It's a question at a time. But it's always done with professional love. So thank you, Brandy. That I, I can't wait to learn more about you and engage with you. I'm really excited. Thank you. Uh, we are at the top of the hour. I want to thank everyone for showing up. There is more to come. You got the first framework for setting an agenda that will allow you to expand every conversation you have. Give it a couple of weeks of practice before you take it to a partner or a spouse. But talk to your sales team, empower them with permission and give us feedback because we're gonna be here to walk you through this step and all the steps that are to come. From at Revenue, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart for the support of Comcast Business and Masergy and the, this DEI initiative. And if you know a partner that is not here today, we're gonna to share the recording. And if they view the recording and there will be a questionnaire afterwards, and come to the next two sessions, they will be in the running for that lightning in a bottle session. And if you were inspired in any way today, you can only imagine what lightning in a bottle will do for your business. Thank you. I can't wait to see you on the 29th. And if I can be of service, I'm here. You know how to find me and please connect with your partners within Comcast and Masergy. They have been showing up for you for years. I'm just a person that gets to come in, celebrate, and elevate with them all. Have a great week. Go close some new business and find some new evangelists. Thank you, Marie. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.